In this video, we're going to talk about the mathematical concept of the imaginary number, which goes together to creating something called the complex numbers. Now, some people feel that because we call it the imaginary number, it's kind of maybe unimportant. It doesn't really matter since it's imaginary, but it's kind of a misnomer. The idea was when it was first talked about, there was a lot of a kind of pushback of this and they didn't think it was a real number. So they gave it this kind of pseudo name and they, they threw it out there and they whenever they would solve problems with it, they were willing to use it during the steps of the problem, but the final answer could not include it because it was imaginary. However, we found over the years that it turns out it's very useful and very practical in many real world applications. So even though it's called the imaginary number, it's actually a real thing and it is very important in both mathematics and engineering, science, and so on. So what is the imaginary number? The idea was if you have the equation x squared minus one, you can go ahead and solve it and get an answer, x is plus or minus one, no problem. But if you tried to solve the equation, x squared plus one is zero, then you'd have x squared is negative one, you would try to square root both sides, and you couldn't do that because there is no regular number that if you square it, gives you a negative answer. So you can't take the square root of negative one. So what they said was, let's pretend we can take the square root of negative one, and we are going to call the answer a new number, and we're going to write it down as i. So i is defined as the new number that if you square it, it gives you the answer negative 1. And if we use that fact, we're going to be able to do all sorts of math just by knowing that i squared is negative 1. So what are if that's the imaginary number, what are the complex numbers? So complex numbers are any time you have a real number a plus a real number times i, b i. So for example, if I did 5 plus 2 i here, that would be a complex number. I have the real part, which is the 5, the imaginary part, which is 2, so 5 plus 2 i. I could also have 3 minus 7 i. That would be a different complex number. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to actually graph the complex numbers where the real part tells you how far left or right to go. So 5 plus 2i means we're going to go right 5 and then up 2. And this point right here would be 5 plus 2i. And if I want 3 minus 7i, I'd go right 3, down 7, and this would be 3 minus 7i. And so once you start drawing things in this fashion, then this becomes what's called the real axis, and this becomes the imaginary axis. And the number i is just this dot right here that's going up instead of going to the right. So you can think of imaginary numbers as just a 90 degree shift from the real numbers. Okay, well, now that we have complex numbers, what can we do with them? We can add them, we can subtract them. And the nice thing is, you're just gonna add them the same way you'd add any other numbers. You're just gonna use like terms. So the five does not have an i, the three does not have an i. We can combine them, five plus three is eight. And then the two terms that do have i, those are like terms, 2i minus 7i is a negative 5i, and this would be the answer to adding up these two complex numbers. Similarly, we can subtract the two complex numbers. Now, I do want to be careful here because I want to say I'm subtracting the whole complex number. That's why I have parentheses there. And then because of that, we're going to have to distribute that negative sign in. And so again, like terms, 5 minus 3 is 2. And 2i two 
minus a negative 3i, sorry, minus negative 7i, is going to be plus a 9i here. So we can add them, we can subtract them, we can also multiply them. So if I want to multiply 5 plus 2i times 3 minus 7i, we would get, we have to foil this here. So 5 times 3 is 15, that's f. Outer would be 5 times minus 7i is minus 35i. Inner would be 3 times 2i is 6i. And last would be 2i times negative 7i is a negative 14i squared. Before we finish the problem, though, we need to go ahead and remember that this i squared thing here, that is negative 1. So negative 14i squared is negative 14 times negative 1. And negative 14 times negative 1 is going to be plus 14. And so now we can combine like terms. 14 plus 15 is 29. Negative 35i plus 6i is negative 29i. And this is the result of multiplying them. So multiplying them is a little bit trickier. You have to foil things out then use the fact that i squared is negative 1 to simplify it. You don't want to leave i squared in your answer. If you happen to have like an i cubed or something, you just think about that as i squared times i. So you get negative 1i there. So it just depends on how many i's you get, but you always want to simplify down as much as you can using i squared is negative 1. Now I put division here and we can in fact divide these numbers, but it turns out it's a pretty tricky thing to do. And before we can actually divide them, I have to point out what complex conjugates are. And it's something you may have seen before with square roots, there was conjugates there. And maybe you've even seen complex conjugates before, but the idea of complex conjugate is if you want the conjugate of 3 minus 7i, you just change the i part from plus to minus, or in this case, from minus to plus. So the conjugate of 3 minus 7i is 3 plus 7i. If I wanted the conjugate of 5 plus 2i, it would be 5 minus i. You just change the sign on the i part. And so the general rule is if you have a plus bi, it becomes a minus bi, that becomes the complex conjugate. And the reason why we need this is that it turns out you're never gonna actually divide complex numbers. I just told you you can do it, and we're about to solve this problem, but you never actually divide them. Instead, what you do is you multiply by the conjugate of whatever is on the bottom. So you're never gonna actually do like long division or something here you always multiply by the conjugate of what's on the bottom. On top, if I FOIL out, 5 times 3 is 15. Outer, 5 times 7i is uh, 35i. 3 times 2i is 6i. And 2i times 7i is plus 14i squared. Notice it's not the exact same as the one we already did up here because I'm multiplying by the conjugate 3 plus 7i instead of the original number 3 minus 7i. On the bottom, we FOIL that out as well. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 7i is 21i. Minus 7i times 3 is minus 21i. And then minus 7i plus 7i is minus 49i squared. And the nice thing that's going to happen on the bottom every time is the middle part with i's are going to cancel out. The i squared term, so minus 49i squared is plus 49. 9 plus 49 is 58. And then on top, uh, 15 minus 14 is 1 plus 41i. And then you can break it up into two parts because the bottom now is just a single number. It's not a complex number. It's going to be 1 over 58 
plus 41 over 58i. So now we have it in the standard complex number form. So you can see it's a bit of work to try to divide these things. And again, you never actually like do division here. It's only multiplying by the conjugate. But we can now add, subtract, multiply, divide, or find conjugate of any complex numbers. So at this point in time, you want to practice all these operations so you know how to handle them whenever you have an I in a problem.